Um, welcome. This is the uh, April community chat. Um, we're talking about uh, cPanel themes, specifically Paper Lantern and Jupiter, and also kind of dreaming up sort of future of hosting tools and platforms, maybe even um, sort of what we, what you would all like to see, what I'd like to see, um, things like that. So um, I think uh, the, the big one to kind of kick off here is there is a transition sort of happening in cPanel land. It's been happening for a little while, actually. Um, and that is um, the, the theme that we've been using at Reclaim across everything that uses cPanel, our shared hosting, domain of one's own, um, is the paper lantern theme. Uh, it's the, the one you're probably familiar with. Um, and uh, a while ago, and on top of my head, I'm trying to remember exactly when they uh, laid this out. It would be a, um, about a year and a half ago, they laid out the Jupiter theme, um, which is sort of the next big supported theme from the cPanel folks. And there are some differences. There's some things it's supposed to do better. There's some things that that I'm not a big fan of about it. Um, but uh, but I would say all in all, it's it's similar. Uh, the tools are you know in the same places. They're called the same things. Um, but some things look a little bit different. But I kind of wanted to talk about sort of what those differences are and actually lay them out, other than to say they are different. But we can kind of dig into it a little bit more. Um, and I also think it's kind of interesting to see over the rollout of Jupiter um, how what's changed because um, uh, Jupiter itself is you know available. You can use it right now. You can switch to it um, if you want to, and I'll kind of show that. Um, but um, some of the things that they talked about that, that cPanel talked about when they originally announced it are not there yet in Jupiter. And they're things that I'm interested in seeing um, what they look like when they do appear and what they may allow us to do at Reclaim and what allow admins of Domain of Zone to do. Um, and some of them are, um, you know, they're just they're just not here yet. And they've announced that they're going to be rolling that out later. So it's kind of interesting um, to look at that. Um, I'm going to share my uh, screen real quick um, just to kind of show this initial blog post from um, cPanel on, hey, like we've got a new theme, it's called Jupiter. Um, this is July of 2021 is when they put this out. Um, and they talk about, hey, the tools page, this is the same thing as, this is effectively cPanel as far as I'm concerned. This is the page with all the stuff on it. Um, you can see here in this theme, that they actually, in the initial version of it, did not have icons, at least in this screenshot. And that's actually different now. There are icons there now, which, thank God. Um, honestly, I thought this without any icons was not great, um, personally. Um, they also talk about this solutions page, which this is not currently here um, in the version of Jupyter that we're seeing right now. But the idea of this is this is an effort to sort of embed documentation and support materials right into cPanel, which I think is a great idea on the face of it um, and something that I'm kind of interested to see. Now I'll say they have pushed this off. It's not in there right now. And I personally think the how this is done matters a lot. And right now we can't know what it's gonna look like um, just because they don't have a lot of information out there about it. But um, this idea, I think, is, interest, is an interesting one to me. Um, and the other thing that they're talking about going forward at this point was having um, guided solutions. So this would be a um, sort of walkthrough style documentation and, and things that you could add to cPanel. Um, and again, this is one that is really interesting to me, um, I think, because the idea of you know, when you first sign up for an account, a hosting account, and you get dumped into cPanel, and it's like, now what? That's tricky. I mean, we've, at Reclaim, we have the applications thing at the top of the, of cPanel to, you know, hey, that's, I want WordPress, so you can click on it, and that's at least something to get you started, but I love the idea of, you know, an official solution from cPanel that would have the capacity to help folks um, kind of, 
explore and figure out how to do maybe more complicated things. Maybe maybe you could have a guided solution on, you know, how do I register? If you're a domain of one's own administrator, you know, you could have a guided solution that's how do I register a top level domain? And what does that even mean? You know, uh, oh, well, you could go to a registrar and then you would do this. Having that right in cPanel could be kind of cool, I think. Um, and then they also talk about customization. So uh, having help section and, um, you know, adding common questions to it, resource links, uh, link, like mentioned before, link your own documentation videos, change the color palette, upload custom logos. Some of this is stuff um, that is, I mean, changing the color palette's neat. Um, but I, again, you know, linking your own stuff, I think that would be really cool to see. It's not here yet. It's just something that they've mentioned that they want to do. So I'm really excited to see that potential. Um, but, you know, some of that we're still waiting on. Um, again, this is a blog post from almost two years ago. Um, so looking at cPanel's um, Jupyter page now, and this is just sort of like their, you know, product page, I guess, for it and talking about what's here. Um, some of this stuff is uh, elaborated on. Some of it, they focus on different things in here too of the strengths. So you can see a more updated screenshot. Um, I always find it interesting that in their screenshots, they put email as the first block, which in my experience is not what people are using cPanel for. Uh, I mean, you may use that, but it's not the first thing you're using cPanel for. Um, so I think that's kind of interesting. But, um, you know, they, they focus on sort of mobile um, compatibility, which is good to see. Um, and... Um, they talk about, hey, there's a modern look and feel, improved navigation, one-click WordPress installs, and accessibility. So this is sort of stuff that I wanted to kind of demo a little bit and talk through. So the first of all, we'll talk about one-click WordPress installs. We already have that in Reclaim Hosting because of Installatron, so this is sort of not a factor. If you're curious, Installatron is something separate from cPanel. It integrates, so it's something we have. But you know, if you were to go to a different uh, company hosting company that may use cPanel, they might not have Installatron. So um, ha having that part of cPanel is interesting, but kind of doesn't really affect our situation so much. But these other three, I would say, do. Um, the modernized look and feel. So looking at this here, this is my own cPanel um, for shared hosting. Um, and again, I mentioned you can flip back and forth. So if you're curious looking at this yourself, um, you know, you can just go to cPanel on wherever, you know, account. Um, and probably you're on Paper Lantern right now. So if you go to the sidebar here under theme, you can just switch this over to Jupyter and see what it looks like. Um, there, you know, ultimately it's, it's very similar. You've got the same um, basic categories. You've got the same tool names. I think the icons are, I don't like them very much. I think they're less colorful and fun, but they are there. So that's good to see. Um, our applications box category that we add is, is available and works the same as it ever has. Um, so that's, that's an option. That's something that we had to work to integrate into this new theme. Um, but from the most part, this is very, very similar other than it's a different color scheme and look. Um, you'll notice this is one thing I don't love is that this sidebar where tools and then they were talking about solutions would go here. Because there's no solutions, there's just one thing that says tools and that's all that's in the sidebar. It's kind of a weird sidebar. Um, that does make it a little easier, I would say, when, when you're telling folks how to do things in cPanel. If you've ever been in the situation of saying, all right, go to, say, add-on domains, and then you have to tell them, okay, go back to that main page, You don't, the only option, the best option, I think, was to tell people to click on the little, I call it the waffle menu <laughs> that's in the top right. It was a very small button um, in Paper Lantern, and this is what it looked like. So you have them click on this, and that's okay, but... Um, I do like that there's an actual text label on it now. So you can just help tell people click on tools and that will get them back to the tools page. And it's even labeled with a header of tools. So I do think that is an improvement and that kind of gets into um, the, the other thing mentioned here of improved navigation and accessibility. So 
I'm definitely not an expert at um, like evaluating the accessibility of web pages, but I will say I did some basic looking at like the structure from like headings and and sort of the makeup of cPanel. And I do, I can see the work that they're talking about in terms of improved accessibility. There's actually a more logical structure. This is a, uh, this is the header one, and then each of these are header twos, I believe, um, under them. And that wasn't really exactly the same structure in Paper Lantern. So that's really great for folks who are using things like screen readers and um, other tools to aid in the use of the page. Uh, I also say I did test this out in a screen reader. Um, I was just using VoiceOver on the Mac. It's just the built-in one. Um, and Paper Lantern has a lot of issues in VoiceOver, at least, where text labels get repeated every time. So if you're, if you're having it read out to you what the applications box says, it'll say WordPress icon, WordPress, WordPress, Omeka icon, Omeka, Omeka. That seems to be resolved in Jupyter. Um, so as far as I can see, those are the major things. But I'm sure there's a lot of other... Um, changes that I'm just as a somewhat of a layman here um, can't speak to. But um, it is encouraging to see that um, both the mobile support, the tools menu um, being labeled, and um, the screen reader improvements, um, at least to me, all seem like genuine advancements if um, small ones in cer certain, some of them are kind of small ones. Um, but uh, it is kind of interesting to see. So, but other than that, you know, it's a it's a look and feel refresh basically. Um, so that's kind of a, a quick breakdown of just like this is the the things that I tailor am noticing are meaningfully different or meaningful improvements. Um, it's also worth pointing out that there's some things to um, note about like. Where are we at in this process of moving between these things? Um, so um, we are currently, as a company, using cPanel 10, version 102, which is a long-term support version that is the last version that lets us use both Paper Lantern and Jupyter. Um, and that gives us a lot of time here to make the change over to Jupyter um, as we, as a company, are updating our documentation. So we are actually... Um, pretty far along in updating our own documentation at support.reclaimhosting.com. And then next from that, we'll be um, updating the uh, the, docu the domain of one's own documentation that some schools utilize. That's, um, if you're unfamiliar, that's, you can see a sample of it at stateu.org slash docs. Um, and uh, that is our next task to sort of, um, uh, Taylor, you muted. Oops. Um, that is our next next task to sort of update. I just, oh, Pilot threw it in there too. Um, so if you're unfamiliar, that's what I'm talking about with our community documentation. That would be the next thing we're working on updating. Um, and that's where we're at. Um, it's, imp again, important to note that really what we're updating is screenshots. The actual text and how the tools work, that stuff's the same. Um, so it's not a radical change in some ways, um, but uh, but that's something we're working on. Um, the, uh, so, and, and I guess the, the final thing about the documentation too. So if you have your own set of documentation that you maintain, this may be something you wanna to um, keep in mind. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll probably put an update out there when we have the domain of one's own documentation um, updated, we can let admins know, like, hey, this is updated. If you want to grab our screenshots, you know, feel free to reuse them. Um, or uh, we do have the capability of actually replacing your documentation suite with this one, with our updated one. So if you want to just start over from what we have, you can do that too. You just would let us know in a ticket and we would get that updated for you. The, the tricky thing, because there it is itself a WordPress site with its own content, we don't have a way to like, if you have your own customized documentation, we don't have a way to just replace your images for you. That that will be a, a manual process. Um, and if folks have questions about the documentation stuff, there's a lot of things we could talk about in terms of documentation and, and sort of the future of that. Um, but um, 
I'm also sensitive to that we're 20 minutes in almost, and I haven't given anyone an opportunity to speak except for me and Amanda when I was muted, I guess. Um, so I just wanted to say, like, what, what, kind of get the temperature of folks in the call. Like, what, what are, do people have questions about the theme and functionality stuff or maybe documentation? Like, what are, where are people at right now? Or Pilot and Amanda, like, anything that I'm missing talking about what Jupiter offers? I think you covered it from my perspective. I'm trying to think. Um, I'll admit that I don't have the most experience with Paper Lantern uh, or with uh, Jupiter because my experience is all in Paper Lantern. And also uh, I don't do that much of my own work in cPanel. Um, I do a lot of troubleshooting in cPanel, but as a user, I have my blog, my site set up, and I tend to go directly to that. Yeah, I um, um, I would uh, I would say I actually do interact with it quite a bit for my own shared hosting, just because I do a lot of stuff in the file manager. Just I have a lot of weird little files in there, um, but I've been moving back and forth, and it's been fine. You know, as Shannon mentioned in the chat, like it is a lot friendlier than last time we were looking at it. So I I would say it's an, been an improvement there. Uh, M, you got your hand raised. Yes. So this might uh, be already addressed in um, the documentation of state U docs, but I noticed with the switch into Jupyter, the ability to create additional domains um, is going to be deprecated. Create additional domains in terms with of uh, different accounts sub -domains, or sorry. subdomains. Sub yeah, um, that you'll still be able to do that. I think. I think what's deprecated. So, um, and again, I could be wrong in this, but there's kind of a there's sort of two ways to make add-on domains and subdomains right now in cPanel, and that is there are subdomains. There's that button called subdomains and the button called add-on domains, and then there is a new tool called just domains. And that domains tool tries to kind of do everything all in one. You can make subdomains there. You can do add-on domains. Um, and that is their new tool. And I think that's where they're putting development going forward. They haven't announced that they're going to pull the other tools yet. And um, this is kind of a similar situation to Jupyter in some ways. In my opinion, the add-on domains and subdomains panels are easier to use, um, I think, than the combined one. But I can see from their perspective, like it's kind of weird because people don't know, like, what is an add on domain? That's actually a cPanel concept. It's not really a universal concept. So I could see that from that perspective too. But I, um, so that, first of all, that is not inherent to Jupyter right now. You do still have all of the, the three things that you just do still have the add on and subdomain tools as well as that domains tool that's. It's been there for a few versions. It's been at least as long as I've been working at Reclaim. I think significantly before that, actually, but I, I can't tell you when it was introduced. But um, and they haven't announced like we're pulling the old ones yet. But um, that would be another change, and that would be another documentation, you know, change potentially. Although a smaller one, because it would just be, you know, if you have documentation on how to make a subdomain, that would be at that point. But it's we're at a point right now where at least. From our perspective at Reclaim, we still would recommend people use the subdomain tool for making a new subdomain because it's it's a little simpler to wrap your head around. Right. That's a good question. Yeah, and when you click on the subdomain, you get an information box in blue. I can share my screen too if you want a look. It says subdomain management is now available in the domains interface. We have deprecated the subdomains interface and will remove it in the future release. Yeah, yep. So... Totally. Is, they haven't announced when, though. Look at from, a, from a faculty or staff perspective, or even the students who have cPanels, because there is no date associated with a future release. Um, so just having that available within the domains of how to create a, sub, a subdomain or add-on domain in future releases where subdomains is no longer going to be available in cPanel. 
Yeah, I think that's something we can definitely put on the list of, um, you know, well, certainly something we'll have to document of how does that work. Um, I think the the I'd be hesitant at this stage for us to have like competing documentation of these are the two ways because I I feel personally I feel like it's complicated enough. I think when folks when you're writing documentation, it's good to tell folks this is the way we recommend. There may be other ways to do it, but this is the way we recommend. Um, but you know that's not to say we couldn't have something ready, maybe even share it um, with the community and say this is what we would say, but we're not going to put it out there until it makes sense to go that direction. But that's just my opinion, right? Like, so there's nothing to say that if you were making your own, you couldn't say, we at Carlton recommend you use the domains panel and here's how you do it. And I'll say from, it's not that complicated to make a subdomain in there or anything. It's just basically what happens when you go to the domains panel, you get a text box to type in whatever you want. So my main domain name is jaden.me. If I put in um, uh, subdomain.jaden.me, it will know what you want to do and react accordingly. Um, and then from there, you have to uncheck a box that says share dom uh, document root if, if you don't. Uh, it, it basically tries to, to, to assume what you want. Actually, I can show this really quick too. Um, here's what it looks like. So. Um, if I, so I'm in that um, thing, and I, I meant, Shannon mentioned you're not seeing that. I think that may be a, a version thing. We should have most people on the same um, version of cPanel, but I can double check that. But anyway, if I go to subdomains here, um, it, this is what uh, M you're talking about, right? This, mm -hmm. this blue box. So if you do click on this or just go back and you find yourself just clicking right on domains, um, this is what it looks like. So this is every like web directory on my account. I have a lot of accounts linked in here, or sorry, a lot of domains linked in here, so ignore that. But I can click create a new domain. And let's say I registered, a, or I wanted to register a new subdomain, let's call it subdomain.jaden.me. Once you do that, it's gonna go, oh, jaden.me already exists, he wants to make a subdomain, and it's going to assume what I want here. And it'll say, great. And you'll actually notice here that it, it unchecked, um, oops. it actually unchecked the uh, share document root box automatically, kind of figuring out what I wanted. And so I would just crit, hit submit here, and it would make it. So, and the reason I say that I think it's more complicated is not that I think typing in a single subdomain name is complicated, but I personally feel like when folks are creating a subdomain, a button that says subdomain is more discoverable, right? To find out what you do. Um, and I, so, but that again is for sure up to interpretation. Um, so I, uh, I wouldn't say that I'm, um, you know, that's just my thought on it. Um, but um, yeah, I, I don't think it's particularly complicated, but yeah, it will have to be documented in the future. Um, and um, something on our list for sure, but we, we don't have any word from cPanel at least is when that would be removed. And when it does, it's important to keep in mind that it's not a hard date. What it is is it's this version will remove it, and then it's up to us at Reclaim to decide when we're gonna roll that version out for folks. We don't talk a lot about cPanel version updates because most of the time we don't, like end users don't really care, right? Like it's sort of more ab about security and bug fixes and things. Um, but this theme stuff and something like the domains panel like you brought up, M, those are times where they would care, right? So, but thanks. I kind of forgot to cover that. That's a good point. It's definitely related to Jupyter 2, but um, the same thing would happen with Paper Lantern. For, there is both options in Paper Lantern as well. Tim asked in the chat, Taylor, uh, if we wanted to future-proof our local documentation, so the documentation that's specifically on a domain of one's own instance, uh, 
can we remove the add-on domains and the subdomains icon from cPanel in anticipation? And I think that would be as simple as modifying the package that a user gets to say, no, you don't get these tools anymore. Yeah, those, those I think you're right, uh, Pilot. You could remove them there if you wanted to. I will say um, that may be a good move. We've seen cPanel walk proposed changes back before, so it's possible <laughs> that they wouldn't. I think um, I think it would be a safe change to make, to be clear, but I'm just saying you aren't guaranteed 100% that this will happen because this is the same thing. Jupiter was announced, and it was supposed to be, the old theme was supposed to be deprecated much earlier than it has, um, but because of uh, pretty much every company that uses cPanel, <laughs> reaching out and saying this does not work for us in these ways. They made a bunch of changes to the theme, including adding icons, adding continuing support for the older theme longer than expected. That solutions page thing, I think, was a result. The reason that's not there right now is because um, of proposed feedback. So there's a possibility that they would walk back that announcement, although I think maybe it's unlikely in the case of the domains uh, button. From my perspective, documentation is always tricky because things are constantly changing. I made an article last year. I can find the exact date too. It was February, 2022. Um, I made an article saying that this new theme was available and I attached screenshots and saying these are the main differences. At that time, there was no applications. Um, panel at the top and you had to install WordPress, Omega, and whatever applications via the software um, section and click on the Installatron Applications Installer. Since then, things have changed. Icons are added. The My applications have been added. The organization has changed. So I need to go back and update that documentation. Granted, I haven't touched it in a year, so maybe that's my <laughs> on me. And I need um, who mentioned it in the chat, Shannon, that they they have a student documentation lead to constantly look at things and update them. Yeah, I mean, what you just outlined is the thing with documentation, right? Like documentation is so important, and it can be really helpful, but you know, uh, documenting things is not in a one time, it's an ongoing task. And the more documentation you have, the larger the ongoing task is. That's usually a worthwhile trade off, but um, it's so tricky because you can't ever be sure, um, <laughs> uh, you can't ever be sure when's the best time to document something. And personally, I'm always kind of trying to figure out the balance, not that there's ever a correct answer, but the best balance for what am I linking to versus what am I creating whole cloth, right? So um, I don't know that we necessarily always made the best change, uh, that I always made the best decisions on that when I was a domains admin, but I tried to link to reclaim stuff or even other cPanel stuff when possible. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a balance for sure. Tim? Yeah, I also think that there's a relationship between uh, your sort of training strategies or your in-class visit strategies in your documentation. And so if you have those students for four years, going in now and sort of retraining them on how to create a subdomain makes some sense because I know these other changes likely might happen at some point over the course of their time here at the college. And that seems to me to sort of tip the scale as to whether or not I need to invest in changing a whole bunch of documentation and things like that. I think that the thing that I put first is what am I going to say when I go into a class or what am I going to say when a student schedules a drop in with me to go over how to do this? And, and I, I would like to start every sort of academic year, at least with a consistent sort of training mm -hmm. uh, approach. And if it looks like the subdomains icon, even if they're going to slow walk it, if there is some, 
possibility in the future of it going away. I think I'd rather just train everybody to use the other, um, use the other tool, um, especially since it's not really any more challenging. It might even eliminate some of the questions that we've had in the past about, you know, how do I do this or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, there's definitely, um, and I, I like, like what you're talking about with focusing on the training part of it. How am I, is kind of how I think we at Reclaim like to prioritize documentation too. Like what are we getting, what are people asking about? You know, what, what questions are people coming to us with and what could be, you know, the most beneficial for them and us to document first? And I think that's usually a good perspective of like, hey, you know, if you're working with your students and saying like, you know, hey, what, what questions have been coming up more than one time or have come up recently at all, I guess, in recent, uh, you know, drop-in appointments or whatever, um, and focusing on those two when you're talking about building out and updating, um, that to me is the best way to start, but it it's, um, again, uh, there's a lot of strategies there. Jim? Yeah, I I just add the view. Um, the the challenge I find in a lot of the documentation is it's very easy for us to and too often I think we end up focusing on the documentation for the use of the tool and how do we and so we're talking about how do we proof future proof the documentation to future changes in the tool. But I think what often happens is we need to we need to think in terms of how do you proof the for future proof the user, and one of the challenges is documentation that focuses too much on the tool is training and students or faculty or whoever does it learns oh when I want this I go do A B C D they don't learn, it's very easy to set up documentation that they don't learn what they're doing with A, B, C, D. Yeah. And and for other folks, then the lack of that knowledge of what's happening ends up being a giant barrier. For me personally, the sooner we can get rid of subdomains and add-on domain tools out of there, the better. Because I would much rather have a separate, uh, whether it, ideally in documentation, but it needs to be a piece of documentation of explaining to people what the heck is a subdomain and an add-on domain. I mean, I don't use those two often enough for me to be clear. And so it's just a giant, you know, that's why, oh, I know I'm going to do something with the domains. I like the new domains tool because it's, you know, it's, I know I'm doing something with domains. And I type in what I want to see. Uh, now, the tool could be improved by adding a response after you type it in there saying, oh, you know, not just automatically checking off the structure of the related, say it's a subdomain, but if they actually added a message that said, oh, you're creating a subdomain. Yeah. Um, that would help reinforce stuff. So that's that's my view on this stuff. Um, I've been using Jupiter for a while now. Admittedly, I don't really, man, we don't really touch, you know, <laughs> yeah, again, it's 98% go in and go to my apps. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, occasionally I'll do the encryption stuff and things like that. But uh, I kind of like it. I, li I like it, frankly. Um, so... Um, what I'd like to see on their do when they do the solutions thing is solutions. It sounds like solutions tied to how do you use the tool a lot, and that's fine. But if they can have a way that it it's easy for us as the admin or the DevOps to say you know to add in I don't know links in those solutions to things we create that are at a higher level background, you know, the, the more fundamental knowledge, if that makes any sense. So. Yeah, I would, I would totally agree with that. I would love to see perfectly honest with you. 
an ideal starting point for a solutions page, A, it wouldn't have the name solutions. I hate that name personally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but let's call it help getting started. I don't know, right? I would love as an admin to have some kind of control that was like this page, getting started, help, call it whatever you want, solutions, fine. The first time they get into cPanel or maybe every time, maybe it could start there and just give me a WYSIWYG editor <laughs> for the page. And all I would do there is link to some support articles I've written elsewhere and yeah. say like, you have an account now and I'd probably link to things like, how do I install a blog? <laughs> um, oh, that'd be awesome. You that know, would be awesome. That, that I think would be great. And then say like, yeah, you know what? You're going to click on the tools page and then, you know, there are a lot of tools that can do this, but a lot of people like to use WordPress for this. That's always right. been my main thing with this stuff and why I think that, you know, uh, that first contact with cPanel is, it's always good when you can have someone there with you or have a video to reference at least or or maybe a, you know, specific instructions, I guess. Um, because if you're a student and you're asked to sign up for an account because you're going to be blogging alongside other students for a course or something, just getting a cPanel account is like, okay, right? You need more information than that, right? Um, then, so I, I would love to see a place for some of those things to be right in front of the user or at least be easy to find maybe, um, in cPanel and I'm I'm hoping some at some point that solutions page can be that. But. Um the uh all right I'm just kind of uh catching up with the chat stuff here. You're muted, Taylor. I keep hitting I don't know spacebar or something and muting. Um I'm just kind of catching up with the chat but um Shannon mentioning the idea of AI chatbots and integration with knowledge bases. That'd be interesting. It's not something I know a lot about right now, but I will say that the, you know, the last round of chatbots from like five, six years ago um, were not very sophisticated. And it would be interesting to see what like the current crop of large language models could do in terms of being fed cPanel documentation and helping people, although I'd be a little bit worried about some implications there in terms of it being wrong, but um, that'd be interesting. And having that be available to folks um, in a friendly way would be kind of cool. This is a dreaming stage, Taylor. I guess, yeah. Dreaming of AI tools that are actually helpful <laughs> and not reinventing the wheel of, of if, if, we have AI tools that can pull stuff straight from Reclaim or existing tools from cPanel. Um, but I, I prefer short snippet little articles and videos saying, I want to create a subdomain. Bam, here's how to do three steps in the domains interface or if it's in the subdomain. I do see some implications in, in the sense that different institutions may have different instructional material. Sure. Uh, and I've seen that with just basic LMS integrations like Moodle. Moodle is just a giant repository of plugins in, at Carleton. And um, there are some blocks that other institutions have that we don't have. And we have faculty who do just basic Google searches and say, hey, I want to bulk move all of my activities from one section to another, but we don't have that. Yeah, and I think, you know, um, that would definitely be the case here. There's definitely schools that have different sets of functionality turned on. Um, or even just like, admins that have different comfortable, you know, like when I was at SNC, I didn't, I helped people a lot with subdomains, but not so much add-on domains. So not that I couldn't, right? Like I would, and I would ask Reclaim if I didn't know something, but like, there's also not just like what's capable, but sort of what is the, the person at your institution going to suggest because this is the best, this is what people are doing at, you know, this school or whatever. Um, there's some value for that, right? So that you, when you have a follow-up question, they actually know what to help you with. 
Um, but I will say, at least from my perspective, too, I think one thing that cPanel um, doesn't do a great job of, but like could, <laughs> it's like almost there, is I would love to see things that let users come to terms with what the capability of this toolbox they've been given is. That's kind of always my interest in Domain of One's Own stuff is like, hey, we've given you this ultra flexible tool for web hosting and you won't necessarily know what's even possible. Uh, and there's a bunch of buttons here and maybe if you're really curious, you could click on them and read the descriptions and maybe that would help you find some things out. But I would love cPanel to be a better launching point for like, okay, so you have, and like contextual too. So you have the domain name taylor.stateu.org. Just so you know, that means you could also have wordpress.taylor.stateu.org. Or it means you could have an email account there if your school allows it. Like some of those things, I would like to see cPanel build in more contextually of like, this is your capability based on the features that are enabled and based on this and have those suggestions, I guess, be somehow integrated. Maybe that's a solutions thing. Maybe it's just more dynamic information in tools like the domains tool. I don't know. Tom has a question in the chat. Taylor, um, has anyone you know done any significant customization or creation of cPanel themes? I personally don't know anyone who's like created a cPanel theme. Um, the the from my understanding, and I could be I'm making a couple assumptions here, but um, the cPanel themes are mostly made by the company themselves. Not that you couldn't make your own, but the support there comes from the company. So it would be probably easier to customize than to create from whole cloth. That being said, um, the customization, at least in the past, has been pretty limited. And it does seem like in Jupyter, they're making some efforts to improve that. So I mentioned already like the color stuff and that's 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 cool. But like I will say the things we've done to make that application panel were kind of, they weren't really specifically hacks, but they were on that level um, with Paper Lantern and some of that stuff to like reorder things to make sure like our applications panel is at the top. Some of that is actually official and easier to do in paper in Jupiter than it was in Paper Lantern. So it'd be interesting to see um, if that keeps improving. I know one thing that I've seen mentioned that I've specifically had admins ask about in Paper Lantern, which was, can we have a panel, like say the email panel, available to, to users, but collapsed so that by default, because you can collapse them yourself and it will remember that, but you can't like set a default collapse setting. And that does look like something they're going to be adding to Jupyter. Um, I've, I've seen in the documentation that specifically referenced. I don't think it's there right now, but that's a small thing, but it could be kind of interesting to say, yeah, you know, here's some more tools. You probably don't need to go poking in here, but like if you want to, <laughs> we didn't take them from you. Um, it could be kind of interesting. They seem to be calling ah. it now. Okay. I'd really like to see, um, Taylor, we've talked about this a little bit. Uh, I don't believe it's anywhere in their actual plans for development, but that big blue bar that you pointed out on the left-hand side, um, in my ideal world, you can click and drag tools from cPanel into there to create like a hot menu um, so that you can get the things that you need all the time without having to scroll and look for them, but. Yeah, having some like user customization or maybe even admin like defaults yeah. too. Some, yeah, something like that. Um, and I know that you said they're gonna be putting stuff there eventually, theoretically, but in the meantime, it's a lot of open space that could be customizable and isn't, so. Yeah, I agree. I think 
all I've seen them talk about is tools and solutions. And even if both of those things, right now solutions isn't there. And even once they add that, that's still still a lot of empty space. And I would love to see that. I like the idea of like bookmarking tools or favoriting them or something. Mm -hmm. That could be kind of cool. Um, maybe even be interesting to see if like there was some capability to put, again, like contextual information there or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so Tom linked to the spot where they talk about the collapsing feature. I think the question for me, and I, I have looked at this exact page. I haven't personally messed with this on like one of our uh, development servers that we have, but um, but the question for this and that cPanel doesn't always document well is they'll make this change, update the documentation, and then not necessarily mention what version this is available in. So I don't know if in 102 this works yet. Which is a version we're using, but uh, it might be. It might. It might be. Um, so that's something I'm kind of excited about. It's a small feature that default collapsing thing, but I think it could be interesting. So um, I have a couple things to kind of keep keep the keep the dreaming going. Although well, we're we're getting 50 minutes in already, I guess. Um, but I, I've kind of wanted to see i like to take notes on these and see what people bring up um but what if folks feel like cpanel uh, so so one of the thing again i brought this up but this is not a new idea this is a sense really domain of one's own as a concept but like that cpanel can be a toolbox to let people you know play in this space play in the web find out the capabilities and do things with those capabilities what do what do, what if people feel like cPanel does well? Like, does it do that? Is it living up to that? I mean, I know technically those things are capable, but like, do you feel like do you feel like students or faculty or really anybody who's encountering cPanel are they discovering some of these things on their own, or do they have to be told? Does it do any of those discoverable things well? And you can feel free to mention that in the chat or you know speak up. What does it help people discover? Um, the first thing that comes to mind for me, and I know that this isn't cPanel specific because PHP my admin is independent of cPanel, but as a, a teaching tool, I think uh, PHP my admin um, is really helpful in bridging uh, from a person's sort of introduction using WordPress to an understanding of how relational databases work, um, helping them to recognize that WordPress's architecture um, relies on a relational database. Um, and I think that having it available the way it is in cPanel for folks to have already installed some applications and then see how those directories are sort of laid out also gives them a little bit of an insight into a sort of model view controller kind of architecture. So, I mean, I'm talking to students who are really delving in at this point and asking in-depth questions, but I think that that part of it, um, and the file manager, because honestly today with Chromebooks and things like that, folks don't have a real deep understanding of what a file system looks like or how those kinds of things are organized. So both of those I think are, are pretty effective for teaching. Yeah, I love that, um, and I would totally agree. I, um, I've i seen even, like, comp sci professors use cPanel file manager to kind of help folks come to grip with directories and things like that, and it's so great to be able to just pop that open and see, this is the stuff, <laughs> and you can mess it up from here if you want to, you know, um, and, and um, yeah, I love that, um, both those examples. I, I'd say... It's it, the usefulness for me of, of cPanel and the related tools that are in cPanel. Um, the folks I deal with are at the opposite end of what Tim just talked about. They're not diving in deep and stuff like that. As a matter of fact, a lot of them I you know get introduced to the cPanel and they never really need to do much of anything with it. 
Uh, and if they do, they call me and I step them through it. But at least they've seen familiarized with cPanel. The big trick, but that experience alone, just getting into it and seeing some of the tools is it's educational because without that, I mean, yeah, alternatively, it could be Plesk or, you know, one of the similar ones. But I mean, the, the corresponding transition here is this is w at least Windows, the first version of Windows, or, you know, back in the late 80s, where you could interact with your computer, point and click, you know, GUI interface, and not have to go with entire command line interface. And so as a result, I mean, when folks experience that, and I, you know, I just explain, look, this is how you control a server, you know, without how, I mean, it's the Windows controls your local machine. Um, you know, this is how you control the server. And you start seeing the light bulb go on and they begin to realize that, oh, all that stuff in the cloud, all that out there is just another computer, <laughs> you know, and it has, it works the same way and it has all the same stuff. And like you say, uh, you know, file structures and things like that. Um, and that's, that's very useful. That is, um, I, I like that metaphor too, right? Maybe of positioning cPanel is the operating system of your web hosting, even if it's like, okay, well, technically it's Linux. Like if you, if they want to know, but like, but to think of it, to conceptualize it in that way and think of like you use windows and is windows your computer? Uh, no, but it's how you interact with it. Maybe. You know, right. um, and it's, it's, it's actually for those of us old enough. Um, it's actually like the very first Windows, which like was in fact <laughs> yeah. just a GUI shell over DOS. Sure, yeah, and that, <clears throat> that yeah. and I I do think the cool thing about that metaphor, and I've used that one before with folks sim in a similar way, um, is for folks that want to keep diving. That metaphor keeps working on a deep level too, right? Like because. Everything you can do in cPanel, you could do from the terminal. <laughs> like literally, well, I shouldn't say literally. I'm sure there's some exceptions. But even as a user, like with no admin privileges, pretty much everything has a terminal equivalent. And if you want to know that and explore that, this is a place where you could. Now, so that that it's kind of cool that that keeps working at the uh, front end and the deeper level, I would say. Um, I think, um, Shannon, one thing that uh, you mentioned, DNS, and I would agree. I think it's a good place to, I mean, it gives you the tools to explore DNS, but yeah, DNS is complicated. And one thing I would love to see with cPanel is, so like if, if you all haven't encountered this with DNS before, but the idea, that one of the things that's trickiest about DNS is you can't always see changes you make immediately, right? So you make a change, and then things have to roll out and propagate. Um, and depending on when you've last visited a URL, it may take much longer, like hours for you, versus if you talk to a friend who's maybe off campus, so they're talking to a different DNS server, they may see it instantly. And one of the things that we like to point people to at Reclaim is this tool called whatsmydns.com. It's just a website that lets you see on many different DNS servers, what is the current state of things? And it would be so cool to see cPanel have some kind of like API integration with a tool like that to tell you, you made this change, but just so you know, most of the world isn't seeing that yet. That would be a game changer. Have a little status indicator or some information there. I would love to see something. It's like an idea I've had like as long as I've been doing stuff with DNS and seems obvious to me maybe it's not an easy thing to pull off i don't i don't know it probably wouldn't be and i but i think that would be so that would go such a long way to helping people learn this stuff to know you didn't necessarily make a mistake you just may have to wait a little bit um or or maybe even do even more complicated things and use things like skip dns to let you preview dns changes if you could do that in cpanel man that would be awesome but not right now but that, that's my dream. Because <laughs> I think DNS, at least when you interact with it as much as we do at Reclaim, like I'm, a, I'm certainly more comfortable than I, with it than I was, but I'm still not always confident. I still sometimes have to test or ask 
other folks who may know more than me. So being able to preview those things in the tool in cPanel would be so big. I think knowing HTTP status codes is way more helpful than knowing a ton about DNS. Yeah, um, HTTP status codes could be interesting to have more um, information about what those mean right contextually, and maybe some of that I could pin on Apache, right? Because it's often putting those in front of you, and maybe Apache's um, error pages could have more information there. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this this came up, again, we're talking about students who've shown a real interest in what's going on, but it came up when um, they noticed that you could customize a 404 error page on a website, and they knew what that one code meant but they didn't realize that there were there, there was a whole sort of uh, uh level of information contained in in http status uh codes and how those work and anyway um yeah i don't know that total digression i apologize not a digression at all <laughs> i think that's good um yeah, I, <clears throat> I think, um, I, again, it just kind of gets back to that thing that I, I think cPanel can offer, but it would be great to see keeping working on is like the making things easy for folks when possible, but allowing exploration into the the deeper possibilities as well. You know, being, being both is what I want and is tricky from a design perspective maybe, but it's what I'd like to see them keep exploring. Um, well, I think we're, we're just at about out of time, so I'm gonna actually stop the recording here. Um, so bye to everyone who's watching the recording.